uh, we need to talk about something here that I'm skipping over. Notice that um, we have in chapter 1 the reference to the deity, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12, verse 14, verse 16, 17, 18, 20, 21. God is mentioned in almost every verse, 22, 23. Uh, 25 through 29 and then verse 31. God is in all those verses in chapter 1, but it's Elohim. It's Elohim. Now, when we get, and, and we also have only Elohim, God, in chapter 2, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 3. God, God. But notice what begins to happen in verse 4. The Lord God. Verse 5, the Lord God. Verse 7, the Lord God. Also verse 8. Also verse 9. Also verse 15. Also verse 16, the Lord God. Now, here's what the critic says. The critic says, ah, we've got a different author. No, we don't have a different author. We've got a deeper revelation by the same author. I told you yesterday that Elohim is the generic name for God. Now, I don't know how you do pharmacies and how you do medicine here in Russia, but in America um, we have a drug that's a painkiller and it's called Advil. Advil is the specific proper name of the drug made by one company. The generic name of that drug is ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. I've actually bought that here in Russia, so I know that you have it. Um, the generic name is ibuprofen, but the specific name of the drug when it was first developed is Advil. God is a generic name where other religions and the pagans, they call their deity God. There's only one true God. But the other religions, they use the same name that we use for the true God, our God. Well, there's another name, though, the name Yahweh, which is elaborated and explained in Exodus chapter 3. But it's used before Exodus chapter 3, and it's used here in Genesis chapter 2. And where, whereas the critic says, ah, now Yahweh is used, or Elohim Yahweh is used, or Yahweh Elohim, uh, this means that we've got a different author who's got a different favorite name for God. He doesn't use the name that the author, in the same way that the author in chapter 1 uses. No, the reality is this is, whereas Elohim is the generic name, Yahweh is the covenant name the personal name. Elohim is used when we're being told about God the Creator. Yahweh is used when we're told about God the Relator, God the Covenant Maker, God in relationship. Elohim is God in creation over us, God in power. Yahweh is God in relation to us, God in covenant. And that's about to happen, and that is happening in chapter 2. And one of, the, one of the terms of the covenant is a law, is a restriction. You can do this, you can't do that. Now, the question that we ask as humans is why? Why can't they eat of that tree? Now, let me try to mention two things right now, which are a little bit deep, and, but they're hard to catch on, not because they're, they're that hard to understand, but because we're such rebels against the Lordship of God. First of all, God has determined by the physical creation to establish spiritual reality through physical realities. That's the whole point of the creation. In a moment, Moses is going to explain to us how 
literally how Adam was created. And a spiritual reality is deposited in a physical vessel. God breathes into a body of clay. Well, there was a spiritual reality deposited in the tree of knowledge. And that reality was death will come from partaking of this tree. Maybe physically it was good, but spiritually it was a poison, a poison that would kill. There are spiritual poisons just as there are physical poisons. And God warned them against the reality of that spiritual poison. Now as to why, why God did it with this tree and not this other tree. Um, many, many times we're tempted to ask the question, and we have the question asked in Scripture, why does God do this or that? Here's what you have to remember. If there is a principle above God's own will, then that principle would be greater than God. If there was a standard that God had to appeal to, to justify why He did anything, then that standard would be God. There is no standard above God. There is a famous dialogue of Plato. One of the problems that we have with Socrates is that we really can't be sure what Socrates really said and what Plato really wrote. When Plato tells us something about Socrates, are we, are we getting it originally from Socrates or is this Plato editing, editing it in his own ideas? Well, we can't know for sure. All we know is that Plato was a great philosopher and that he said that Socrates was the greater philosopher and his teacher. After Socrates was, was being brought to trial, he met a lawyer in the marketplace. And he asked that lawyer, um, whose name was Euthyphro, he said, is something right because the gods say it? Or do, the, or do the gods say it because it's right? You see the question he's asking? Now, the Greeks believed in many gods, and the gods were not perfect. They were not righteous. That's actually a problem in Greek mythology, that question. Is something right because the gods do it, or do the gods do it because it's right? In other words, is there a standard of right that exists above the gods? That's a hard question in Greek mythology. It's not a hard question in Christian theology. Because God is right. God is righteous. God is perfect. Something is right because God says it. Because there is no appeal or authority or a law above God. So we can't ask the question, well, why does God say that about that one tree? Because it pleased Him. Because it was His wisdom to do that. We need no other reason. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.